Hello and welcome back everyone for today's tutorial on how I enhance my waterfall photos in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. This is our waterfall image that we're working on today. And in no particular order, we're going to be jumping around quite a bit, but hopefully you all can keep up with what I'm doing. Now, the first thing I like to do is go down to my tone curve and go to where it says point curve and use one of my presets that I have here. So for this particular photo, we're going to use the skyline curve strong. And then also in doing so, we're also going to increase our shadows and increase our dark level. And then we'll come back to the top and we'll start going from the top down. So for this particular photo, I really want to have a kind of warmer tone. I don't necessarily want the, the greens to, to be as vibrant as they are right now in the unedited. And so we're going to go more kind of like a fall look in a way, because I really want to kind of mute the, the green here. So for this photo, for our color temperature, we're going to increase this significantly to about 7,500. And then for our tint, we're going to decrease that to about 30. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then for my exposure, we're going to de decrease this ever so slightly. And then also do the same for our contrast. And we'll take that to about negative 20 or so. Negative 18 is good. And then for my highlights, we actually want to decrease this quite a bit. Now, I know it looks like we're losing a lot of the light that's on the falls, but trust me we are going to bring all of that back. And then here we also want to increase our shadows all the way and then also increase our whites. And so as you can see, we're starting to bring a lot of that light back onto our waterfall. And so I also want to decrease my black levels here. It's kind of how I get my, my sort of signature look with the, the whole black tones here. So we're going to add quite a bit. And then for our textures, we'll increase that because I really want the detail to pop in this photo because there's a lot of beauty here that I, I really want to kind of exaggerate a little bit. And we'll do the same for our clarity as well. And then we'll also run a little bit of dehazing and that looks pretty good. So now it's kind time to get down to our hue saturation luminance. Our primary colors here is, is going to be the yellow and green and a little bit of kind of like our orange and reds, but definitely our yellow and our green. And so for here, for our red, we just want to increase that. It's got a little bit of red tones in the rocks there. And then we'll decrease our luminance in the reds there. And then for the orange, go up a little bit. And then we'll also go up in our luminance. And then we'll decrease our saturation a little bit here as well. And then for our yellows, we want to take this all the way down to the more orange orange kind of hue. So as you saw back here, these trees, this foliage back there, we have that orange tone now. And then for our luminance, we kind of want to push that ever so slightly as well. Now for the greens, we're going to go a little bit more yellow here. And so we're going to go quite a bit. Looks good. Bring down the saturation as well, because we don't want them to be too much here. And then increase the luminance quite a bit there, a little bit there. Now, here's a tip. If you ever have any waterfall photos that has this kind of ugly blue tint, a quick way in Lightroom to get rid of that is simply coming down to your blue channel and desaturating. That's all you have to do. Very simple. Now, if you have the blue sky in your photo, what you have to do is make a layer mask in Photoshop and then kind of, you know, mask in the, the waterfall or bring in the sky, however you choose of doing that. But that's just a quick way of doing that to, to take away that blue tint off your waterfall. So we'll continue on here. I don't think we have much of purples and magentas, but we're going to desaturate those anyways. And then next we'll come down to our split toning. And now I don't want to do anything to the highlights because that affects the waterfall. And we just went through taking away the blue tint. So we don't want to do anything that messes that up. So for our shadows though, we want to warm up those quite a bit. So we're going to increase 
our saturation on the shadows ever so slightly and then bring down the balance a bit there we go and as you can see we're starting to get that that kind of nice warm feel to this photo now something that i'm notorious for is adding sharpness to my photos now as you can see this photo is plenty sharp i don't need to do anything of the nature but i just like to go crazy with it so we're gonna do it we're going to add a little bit more sharpness there so we'll run our lens profile correction go to zeiss and there's my lens there and then we'll continue on down down to effects and so we just want to add a little bit of vignette here go to about 40 percent take our midpoint all the way down but then bring our highlight up as well as our feather and then change our roundness a bit there and then we'll also come down to our calibration and we're going to manipulate our all of our channels we're going to start with our red channel go up to about 22 there increase our green quite significantly and then decrease a little bit in our blue here and then also do the same in the saturation for for the blue channel and then next i want to come back up to the top and we want to select our radial filter so what i want to do here is just go over this area that's down here and so what i want to do is increase the shadows significantly just to bring some of that detail back there and then we'll also do the same on our white level looks pretty good there i may come back down a little bit to my effects and maybe let off a little bit on my vignette ever so slightly there we don't want to come too far that i think that looks pretty gosh darn good looks pretty good there now i could actually fix a little bit of the waterfall here but what i'm going to do is export this now because i think we've we've got the perfect look that i want in lightroom and then we're going to do our final adjustments over in photoshop now we've brought our photo into photoshop to do our final adjustments now remember i said that i could have done these adjustments to finish off my waterfall in lightroom but I want to show you in Photoshop, I want to show you quite a few things here. So we're just going to go to our Dodge tool and we're going to select that. And then I want to select my highlights for my range. And then we'll just go over the, the waterfall here. Go over that a little bit. Now we did a little of that and we're going to come down here. Just hover over the highlights there. Now I want to go back up and also do mid-tones to kind of get those darker areas of our falls. We don't want to go too far to where we kind of throwing a little bit over exposure in there, but I don't, I don't worry about this too much because the waterfall sometimes is heavier in certain areas than it is in, in other parts of the falls. And so that's kind of a natural kind of thing to have. So I don't worry too much about that. But we just want to make sure that we get the kind of the, the brightness that I specifically want for the falls here. Now I'll go back up to my range and do shadows. And then we'll actually make this a little bit bigger because we want to kind of bring in a little bit of our shadows down here. Now, of course, we did run the vignette in Lightroom. But I use this to kind of add a little bit of lift ever so slightly because I don't want to do it overall in the entire image of what I would get in uh, Lightroom. But then I could still do the same thing by using the radio filter just as I did down here in the, the lower part of this photo. But just to kind of split up what I'm doing is why I'm showing you certain things in Lightroom and then others in Photoshop. So we've gone through that and then wait for it, everybody. Here it comes, that infamous lens flare. It's like, why, why does he have to do that here? You all know I love to do my lens flare, so it's it's like part of what I do. So yeah, we're gonna add that here. We're gonna add it at the very top where we kind of have this like sunlight beaming out a little bit. So we're going to do that and we're going to undo the lens flare, come to layer, new fill layer and solid color. Click OK. We want black, which it is. Click OK. And then come back to filter. And since that's the last thing that we did under the filter, all we have to do is click the first 
option here which says lens flare and it recalls it in the exact same spot so now that it's there go back to filter we want to blur and gaussian blur and so 57 pixels is good hit ok and now we'll come over to where the layer is and then select screen now i want to change the opacity because i don't want it to look so obvious the way that it is and so we're going to decrease that quite a bit here okay because we just want it to kind of like add a little bit of light there we don't want it to be distracting so it's, it's not like my my usual where it's kind of like obvious um, I, I know when to tone it down every now and then so we'll flatten the image and then we'll carry on so we'll come up to image do adjustments do levels and run one of my presets that I have here. And I think we'll do 7S. I don't know, I might do seven. Yeah, add a little bit of extra contrast there. Okay. And then we'll come back to image, adjustments, curves, and then we'll do my custom two. Okay. And so that looks pretty good. I think that looks very, very beautiful. I really love this photo. I know there are some that might brighten up the, the edges a little bit, but my focus here is the falls. And so I really want that to be accentuated in our photo. And, you know, everything around is just adding to that. But I don't want to distract from the falls itself to where you're kind of wandering everywhere else. But I think that's good. So hopefully this shows you all, you know, how you can enhance your waterfall photos. And maybe following along with this tutorial, you can help in improving your waterfall photos. So until next time, I will see you all in the next video.